Many countries have come up with different megaprojects, either individual or collaborative, that have caused a paradigmatic shift in the infrastructural and trade relations globally. In this video, we are going to show you the biggest megaproject world records. The video is going to be amazing, so make sure you stick to the end. Moscow International Business Center The Moscow International Business Center MIBC, occupies an area of 60 hectares and is located just east of the Third Ring Road at the western edge of the Presidentsky District in the Central Administrative Okrug. Construction of the MIBC takes place on the Presnenskaya embankment of the Moscow River, approximately 4 kilometers, 2.5 miles, west of Red Square. The complex is home to the highest number of skyscrapers in Europe. The government of Moscow first conceived the project in 1992 as a mixed development of office, residential, retail, and entertainment facilities. An estimated 250,000 to 300,000 people will be working in, living in, or visiting the complex at any given time. By 2016, 12 of the 23 planned facilities of the MIBC were already built, 7 buildings were under construction, and 4 were in the design stage. Before construction began, the area was a stone quarry and industrial zone, where most of the buildings were old factories that had been closed or abandoned. A public company in the city was created in 1992 to oversee the initial creation and development of Moscow City, as well as its subsequent usage. City is also a general contractor and both landlord and lesser. Overall responsibility for the architectural planning and design of Moscow City belongs to the architectural studio No. 6, which is a part of the large Moscow practice Moss Project 2 named after Mikhail Vasilievich Posokin. This group, headed by Genady Lvovich Sirota, who is officially the chief architect of Moscow City, is in charge of overseeing the design of the complex as a whole and agreeing with the details of individual projects. Each building lot has its own investor and architect. By 2014, the volume of investments in Moscow City was approximately $12 billion. Major thoroughfares that connect to the IBC are the Third Ring Road, Third Magistral Naya Street, and the Presnenskaya Embankment. To correspond with the growing MIBC, new highways and interchanges were built to connect the MIBC with the main transport arteries of the city. These projects include the 10-lane Dorogomolovsky Bridge of the Third Ring Road over the Moscow River, the Third Ring Road interchange with Kutuzovsky Avenue, and the extension of the Presnenskaya Embankment. Existing roads were reconstructed and rearranged. Before we move on, support us by hitting subscribe and the bell icon to get notified when we post new videos. Now, let's get back to our topic. Denmark's Energy Islands 30 years after Denmark built the first offshore wind farm, it's pioneering another energy first, creating an artificial island expected to generate enough wind power for the country's entire grid, plus other parts of Europe. Slated to be operational in 2033, the DKK 210 billion Danish Energy Agency facility is the largest construction project in the country's history. And the North Sea hub could also provide a blueprint for other coastal nations looking for alternatives to traditional, land-gobbling, renewable energy infrastructure. Denmark builds the world's first offshore wind farm on the island of Lolland. The government launches a DKK 65 million study to find suitable sites to build large wind farms and power plants on artificial islands. Denmark later unveils a climate action plan that calls for big investments in renewable energy and a semi-percent reduction in greenhouse gas emissions by 2030 over 1990 levels. In February 2021, the Danish government introduces the Energy Island Project and launches preliminary studies on the seabed around the island in May. Project owners are expected to close public-private partnership deals for building transmission cables that will send surplus power from the island to other parts of Europe. 2024 Energinet, the Danish operator of the power transmission network, is slated to complete studies for seabed and environmental impacts of offshore wind turbines. 2026 Energy Island Project activities are scheduled to begin. Three years for building. Denmark is still deciding whether to build the entire island at once or opt for a modular approach that would allow teams to scale the island over time. Much of the offshore construction will take place during the warmest months. To keep the project on schedule, some elements of the facility will be built onshore during the colder months. Egypt's new capital Like many countries in the Middle East and Africa, Egypt's power supply has been somewhat unreliable over the years, with scattered unplanned outages due to increased demand from its growing population. Although Egypt is a large producer of oil and gas, the sector along with the rest of the nation's economy suffered from an energy crisis after the country's revolution in 2011. Frequent blackouts in Egypt lessened investment interests from other countries. Government officials knew they needed to incentivize foreign investment to grow oil and gas production, a first step to restoring the nation's economy, and they needed strong international partners to help finance and build new power generation infrastructure. During Egypt's Economic Development Conference in March 2015, Siemens and the Egyptian government reached firm agreements to support the country in its mission to develop a reliable and sustainable power supply. 
In June of that year, Siemens and its consortium partners signed contracts worth 6 billion euros for high-efficiency natural gas-fired power plants designed to boost Egypt's power generation capacity by more than 40% compared to the country's installed base in 2015. Together with Elswoody Electric and Oraskum Construction, Siemens was invited to design, supply, and deliver three combined cycle power plants in Beni Souf to service Upper Egypt, New Capital, to energize the new administrative center east of Cairo, and the strategic area at New Suez Canal Development Zone, and Barulis, to supply the Nile Delta and the Mediterranean coast. Siemens Financial Services structured the financing package for Siemens' role in the contracts, including a tailored guarantee concept, the envisaged loan facility supported to a large extent by coverage from two export credit agencies in Germany and Italy were provided by international and regional banks. While Siemens was tasked with the engineering, supplying, and delivering of the Egyptian megaproject on a turnkey basis, many other companies and government partners would also play key roles. Siemens formed consortiums with Elswoody Electric for the Beni Souf plant and with Oraskum Construction for the Barulis and New Capital plants. Both Egyptian-based partners would perform admirably in bringing the projects to completion in a record-setting time of 27.5 months from financial closure. Elsewhere's scope of work included engineering, procurement, site preparation, leveling, civil works, installation of balance of plant equipment, as well as installation of the Siemens turbines. The company spent two months negotiating agreements and technical parameters of each unit at the Beni Souf site with Siemens in Egypt, talks which culminated in a final agreement in June 2015, and set the stunning two-year time frame. We finalized everything in less than three years, Cheroe pointed out, adding, supposedly, these types of plants take four to five years. At Beni Souf, 6,000 workers toiled day and night to meet the tight schedule, amassing a stunning 22 million hours. Those were safe working hours, he stressed. Bye then, damn. The Beheden Hydropower Project is a 16 gigo hydroelectric facility under construction on the Jincha River, a tributary of the Yangtze River in southwest China. It will be the world's second biggest power station after the Three Gorges Dam upon completion. The massive project extends over Ningen County in the Sichuan province and Kaozhou County in the Yunnan province of China. The Bahattan project is being developed by Jincha River Chuanian Hydropower Development Company, which is a joint venture between China Three Gorges CTG Corporation 70%, Sichuan Energy Investment Group 15%, and Yunnan Energy Investment Group, 15%. The Beihan Power Station became operational with the commissioning of the first two 1 GW turbines in June 2021, while the third and fourth generating units were put into operation in July 2021. The project generated 5 billion kilowatt-hours of electricity as of September 2021. The remaining 12 units of the hydroelectric power station are scheduled for commissioning by July 2022. At full capacity, the project is expected to annually generate up to 60 billion coal of electricity, offsetting approximately 52 million tons empty of CO2 emissions a year. Bahetan is one of the four Chinese hydropower projects having an installed capacity of more than 10 GW each. The other three mega hydroelectric projects in the country are the 22.5 GW Three Gorges Dam on the Yangtze River, the 13.86 GW Siluodu, and the 10.2 GW Wudong project on the Jincha River. The Beijing and Wudong projects are being built in phase two of a massive 46 GW hydropower development scheme involving four large projects downstream of the Jincha River. The scheme is part of China's West to East Power Transmission Program to transmit surplus renewable electricity from Western China to the more populated Eastern China. The Siludu and the 6.4 GW Xiang Jiaba hydroelectric projects both located downstream of the Bahattan project were completed in phase one, respectively, in 2013 and 2012. The Bahattan project is being constructed downstream of the Wudong hydropower project, which became fully operational in June 2021. At full capacity, the four projects can transfer up to 190 terawatt hours of electricity a year to eastern China. China Three Gorges CTG is responsible for the construction of the Bahattan hydropower project. CTG collaborated with Dongfeng Electric Machinery, a power generation equipment supplier based in China, to develop the first 1,000 MBU turbine generator for the project. HBI's Wasteel was contracted to supply the turbine stay rings, generator lid, and control rings. Dongfeng will supply eight turbine generator units to be installed in the left bank powerhouse of the Baihen project, while Harbin Electric Machinery Factory was contracted to supply the remaining eight units of the right bank powerhouse. Caterpillar supplied machinery used in the earthworks of the Bahattan hydropower project. So that's it. Please like, share, and comment with your thoughts below if you like this video. Remember to subscribe to see our next video. Stay safe, and we will be back soon with another video.